What is going on, everybody? We are back on it. Hunter Hunter Manga, Chapter 395, I think is what we're on. This should be going up on Monday. Um, decided to switch it up a little bit. A lot of you guys were asking, could we not <laughs> wait so long to upload it on Friday? Um, so this will be the planned upload for the Hunter Hunter chapters. will be on Monday now instead of Friday, so I think I'll only be less than, or just at 24 hours from when the chapter goes up instead of a full week. So that'll keep us a little more up to date. Um, keep you guys interested in more instead of it popping up a week later. You know how that goes. We're also trying to hit 8,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're closing in on like under 200. It's going to be close. Um, so if you're not, 60% of you aren't subscribed. So I already know. Jumping into here. Massive dialogue dump. Um, last chapter. Would we get six or seven new characters? New characters, new names. Don't ask me any of their names. All of them are nen less to my knowledge. Um, but they're past. Or maybe maybe they still think they're friends. I don't know if he if Saridnik thinks the same, but um, looks like they grew up with him in like the Royal Academy, schooling, training, all those type of things. Um, clearly he's taken a different path mentally than <laughs> what they've grown up to be. Um, so I'm curious. Clearly you don't introduce them if you don't put them put them in him, or at least some of them in him, in the same room with one another. I feel like you introduce them to show us a possible different side of him, number one. Or number two, you do it as a way to show just how cold and heartless he is, and maybe even kills or sacrifices them for something, and it's not even like a second thought to him, so I'm curious kind of which way that goes. Troops over here, Mafia groups over here. We have have had no Karapika and really any of the princes since we've started back. Tons of moving parts. Hisoka's over here. This is over here. It's a lot going on. Um, we'll see what we got, though. Click that so you guys can see my cursor, I think. Mic on. All right, let's go ahead and do it. I knew it. Oh, we're caught up with Henry. I knew it. They're warping around the ship. Chapter 395, founding. This should be the only hallway to the standard cabins, but they went in and didn't come out. Hours later, they went in again from a different direction. Oh, he's reading the uh, footage from his cat, cat cam. It's also possible they are... There are secret passageways built into the ship itself, just like the secret hideouts. But if that trap in room 3101 could be created with an ability, it's more likely that they're using an inability as transit to their hideout. You're connecting some dots here. Yeah. Ayala's official office that the military knows of is here in Tier 3. We got a little diagram of the ship here. A platoon of the 4th Prince's personal army discovered the body... Oh, his personal army was the one that found it. Discovered the body of a warehouse guard in the areas currently closed off. Oh, wow. We're having this meeting with both groups. Okay. Right, yes. They weren't in the office. Next, we found the secret hideout also in Tier 3 behind Room 3101. Although this hasn't been confirmed. Nobunaga's group from the troop is heading there. In the meantime, we'll go after the pair Henry found. Capturing them alive would be best since we don't know how the cops will react, but we'll work with what we get. Hael also knows who we are, so we won't take part in the search. But we can turn ourselves in instead if you kill them. Did you explain the trap to the Phantom Troop? Of course. I asked if they had a strategy. <laughs> they said it doesn't matter. <laughs> True. Like... If any, again, I don't, we don't know what some of these, um, members might have. Some of these, uh, leveled up people, the abilities they're unlocking. So you really don't know what you're walking into when you get transported or if you get stuck in a room with them. Um, but they're so confident. Go ahead and teleport one of us over to the room full of you. I have no hesitation thinking either one of the three of them couldn't delete the entire room people maybe i'm thinking too highly of the troop but i don't think so also 
our boy here, Ken. What's his name? Ben? Ken? Something like that. Um, Nov knockoff. His subordinates mentioned, oh, he has a power like you. Was that foreshadowing that he has some type of time slip portal pocket dimension uh, transportation? Again, Nov knockoff. Same look, same type of ability possibly. I'm curious if that's what they meant by they have abilities like you. Or I don't know if his underlings don't know much about Nen and they just see something that they know isn't real or isn't like humanly possible. So they just all chalk it up to like the same thing. We'll see. Because it, it, it'd be pretty careless of them to blurt something like that out around other mafia, like rival mafia group members. You think you'd want to keep that, you know? But again, I don't know if they're just naive kids that don't know anything or who knows. The answer is always going to be the same. If you don't got the money, your lady is... Oh. Oh. Okay, they're all in the room. Okay, so we know that they, 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 at least they didn't disappear one by one. So should we go through this wall? <laughs> no, the door might not be the only thing that activates the trap. Let me try from the bathroom. Oh, so they're just seeking that shit out. He's like, wall, door... If the story checks out, the hidden room should be four to five times as large as this room. That means it should also be connected back there. Ah, they're showing it here. When you come in through the door in 3103. Now you come in through 3101, which is the trap, which teleports you to 3102. Hmm. I don't care if it's a trap. Sure, as long as the trap sends us somewhere within the ship. True. Could dump you out there in the ocean for all you know. What if it throws us out into the ocean? These guys are thirsty for blood. They wouldn't blow an opportunity like that, but you've got a point. Bathroom it is. We still don't know what his ability is. Um. Is he out here cutting, like... I don't know. I, I don't know what we're looking at here. I mean, he looks like... The way this is animated? I can't tell if he's actually, like, cutting through space? Or am I just looking too much into that? I have no idea. Since we don't know what his ability is, we really don't know what he's doing. Or was he just poking his sword out there to see if, like, it would get eaten up or disappear? I don't know. Yeah, send that guy first. See what happens. You first, huh? What? What is... What is... What is... That's... What is that? What's in there? Uh, let me get someone younger. Bro, get in there. Oh, he cut the hole in the wall. Okay. And they're sending the guy in there first. Yeah, that looks like the little hideout. Look at all these sleeping bags and food and just all a bunch of other bullshit. Nobody's here. They were just here. If they sensed us coming and ran, that makes them pretty perceptive. Pretty perceptive, but it's inconsistent. Meaning, that guy with the crescent scar, the one you one-shotted, was a total amateur riding high on getting his ability. But abandoning the hideout, this effectively reeks of leadership and experience. Then why let a defenseless newbie get to us without warning him? Scapegoat? Sacrificing one in order to tighten the reins on the others is likely an explanation. But these guys are very much like us. Maybe a switch was flipped when one of their own was killed? They're trying to piece it together. You keep saying that, but it's totally different. You don't admit amateurs. No, we don't want to destroy the world. You sure? We were like this in the beginning. Are we about to get a troop flashback? We were just fumbling in the dark, searching for something, anything. And most of all, resigning. Resignation and anger were the driving force, am I right? Flashback, Meteor City. 
This has got to be a lucky find for sure. We're stealing VHSs. Nice pass. I hope it's something we don't need to speak the language to understand, like an anime or action. Those foreign language lesson tapes last time were the worst. Gelman, which we don't know. Okay. Gelman lessons taught in Janan, which we also don't know, in 20 volumes. Well, half the fun is not knowing what you're going to get. If only this wasn't Uvo's territory, we could spend more time searching. I miss Uvo, bro. And I have people like I have people DM me all the time and stuff like that of you know, he was he was probably and still is the peak, like the apex, the 101, patient zero of what a pure top 1% enhancer is and we still haven't seen that to this day in the story and I stand on the hill I got a bunch of hate for it at the time I still believe it I hate the way he went out and I hate that it was to Karapika because I'm not a Karapika fan never have thought he was a girl for 80% of the series <laughs> kept getting confused just kept thinking he was a girl um and it's been broken down to me time after time on why Karapika's chains worked and the conditions that were put on it and why it was so effective. And if it was any other type enhancer on Uvo's level that wasn't a spider, um, Karapika probably gets one shot and dusted. So, you know, it's it's been explained and all those type of things. And, and I've went back and forth on like, you know, well, what if in that scenario I denounce the spiders right in that moment is it then still effective? Like, I don't know, that might be a gray area of, like, kind of how that goes. If if I'm Uvo in that situation and I find out why I can't break this shit or why this shit is so effective and, and embedded on me, I'm like, oh, well, I just denounce being a spider. Does the Nen act like that? Like, oh, so this you made it for a spider. I don't know, that's a whole another discussion. Regardless, I miss that man, Uvo, and I feel like... There was just so much more to see, and we still haven't seen that, you know? Because um, I feel like there's rare, there was rare instances where we saw pure people in their respective categories, you know, enhancers, manipulators, etc., etc. Really just showing the pure power that could be in said ability. Um, and we got glimpses of just, like, what just a one the one percentile of an enhancer could be you see some of it a little bit with like Illumi seeing just what like a master manipulator could do with all his needle men and stuff like that and there's other examples but you we really get to see people just going crazy um with their abilities because the deeper you go especially when we're getting to this here everyone's like proficient in three parts or there's somehow something makes up to make them efficient in the other part or you're like Netero where like you're hitting six different things which turns you into a specialist and you're summoning shit from outer space <laughs> it just gets wild um I'm gonna go on a tangent about Uvo let me just keep going Machi was Machi was watching us rummaging around we might get in trouble later you stinking rats how dare you take stuff from my domain I've added up to here, you're dead meat, but if you do as I say and give it back, I'll only kill you once. There's this baby Machi back here. If you keep running, I'll kill you ten times over. Such an idiot. If he's gonna kill us anyway, there's no way we're gonna do what he says. True. True. Perfect hit, you'll die nine more times. He just dusted that dude with a throw. Stay right there. Prolo, you watch it first. So is this Franklin? Who is this supposed to be? Is this a Young's... Uh, Sphinx Boy here? I don't think that's... No, nah, that has to be, because why would we flash back to somebody that might be... Mm, I mean, Ubo's here, so... This is really before the crew really gets going. Hey, Uvo, idiots who care about domains in a place like this can only be cured by death. A place like this, which one of us is the self-diminishing idiot. I'm always myself wherever I am. Oh, God. Just, these two just throw... These two brutes just throwing hands. 
Crollo, stop. Crollo, go. Jesus, this dude looks like a... Oh, this is Sphinx here, and I'm guessing this is Nobu Nog on the back of his shit. Yo, Crow, got something good? Or nicer than Uvo if you hand it over. So how does Crollo, who seems to be the tiniest, most powerless of his group, become a leader of men and women? How did, how did he just become a leader of this? I wonder if we'll ever get Maybe we get it here. We promise we'll give it back to you later. How does he put these people all in one? I mean, if... Easy example would be your city just keeps getting ravaged time and time again and somebody eventually has to stand up and try to put it together to fight it back. Gives me very, um... Nagato, pain vibes. Like, if the rain village is just going to keep getting shit on, we're just going to allow ourselves to get shit on or is someone going to stand up and try to, like push back people could rally to that there you go don't tell Luvo oh I forgot to say later I mean a hundred years later sucker learning ger oh wow eat another tape on him whose mansion is this oh his welcome back Crollo studying from videos again today yeah I see there are more small graves oh it's terrible they even enter the internal residential zones these days. There are more and more kids who get kidnapped and never return. You should avoid going to the outskirts alone. People born in Meteor City don't have certificates or social or societal identity to prove their existence. They, There were reprobates who twisted the fact to mean these people who don't exist don't count as a human. And therefore it was not a crime to hunt them. And people just let that happen. Till Meteor City allied with the Mafia. Exchanging personnel for a guarantee of safety. There were hundreds of victims every year with 70% of those being children under 15 years old. Subsequent to their ties with the Mafia growing stronger, inabilities began to manifest among the city's elders, giving rise to a pledge that eventually became the Law of Retribution. Only life can compensate for a life. We'll accept anything you leave here, but don't ever take anything away from us. As the world came to fear this city of victims whose humanity no one even recognized, the Phantom Troop came into being. Yeah, so I think what we were saying earlier about comparing it to the Hidden Rain Village in Nagato and this kind of like once they started to fall, manifest their own abilities and could start protecting themselves gave a reason for them to come together I'm going to use the AV room again take your time but there's someone using it I figured it was you Paku oh. the others stay away because they don't want to be lectured by father he also told me you were learning stuff from videos. I thought nobody would ever find me in the church. Please don't tell Uvo or Sphinx. Oh, he's at a church. That's why he was talking about the graves and stuff. I thought this man just skipped up at his palace. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you always see right through us. That's not true. Bro, you went for the switcheroo and your tape didn't have shit on it. It's a blank no biggie. Think of it as a new blank tape. Can speak German and Janan already. Yeah, the grammar is similar, so once you learn German, Janan is like a dialect. Crollo is very inquisitive and quite studious. He shows a lot of promise. He surprises me often with his creative ideas. Just you wait. It might be interesting to bring him to the elders meeting to hear his opinions. They're actually curious in his opinions. It would be wonderful if he could help to solve the various problems plaguing Meteor City. Okay, maybe this is how you get people to follow him. If he's brought in like this into the Elders and put in a position of semi-power compared to all the other kids just running around beating the shit out of each other. Oh, is this... Is this the power cleaners? Yep. Mighty Sweep and Power Cleaners, the global sensation. Who? 
They must have programmed the VCR wrong. I fast forwarded about 10 minutes and there it was. This is amazing. Let's invite everyone over and watch it together. We don't have, we don't even have to know what they're saying to enjoy it, right? But it would be more fun if we could understand. Sure, but so I have a favor to ask. This is making me, um, you guys know how it goes. Anime, manga, those type of things. You start slapping me in the face with flashbacks of characters come up and childhood friends and how they came to be. It makes me think said characters are going to be dying soon. And we're not ready for that. <laughs> Anytime soon. And I, and I posed that question a while. Uh, I think it was last chapter, maybe the first chapter Hisoka came back or who we think to be Hisoka. I'm just curious the play of like, is it going to be that straightforward in our face that Hisoka does eventually just kill all the troop members? Maybe with the help of Rapika, or, which I hope they don't go that route. Or just the help of maybe Mafia members, or Princes, or Blind Luck. And then he just ends up killing Krolo. Because I'm curious, like, where does the troop... And we could be 50 to 100 plus chapters away. Where does the troop in Hisoka fit into this overarching arc... The overarching arc is the succession battle and the dark continent. You know, that's why we're here. We're all in this vessel. Where do they fit? Where do their personal squabbles of like the troop wanting to steal shit and Hisoka wanting to just kill? Where does that fill into that like big umbrella? Like, how do their story actually push the major story over other than it just being. It's just going to be a complete subplot that they interact with maybe some princes and whatever and then they handle their shit, they're killed off, and it's whatever. I saw a lot of people last, or the other chapter, talking about, you know, Hisoka's got his VIP pass. Oh, it'd be cool if he went up there and teamed up with Karapika again, and, you know, they hunt off the spot. But I feel like that's way too easy, way too cliche, and I wouldn't even want to see that shit. Now, you let him... I, I don't know why, but maybe he can somehow massage his way into getting close to Seridnik. Or maybe he helps take Seridnik's Nen to another level and the two of them team up. And he gets... Seridnik gets Hisoka to kill the other princes because we know princes aren't supposed to be killing princes in this. And the troop and Karapika have the team up to protect Wobble or whatever. And that would be wild. But I'm, I just don't know. There's so much moving. I don't know where the troop and Hisoka fit into the story. Um, I see where the Zodiacs fit in. Because they are here for the overarching mission. See where the princes fit in. I can even kind of see where some of the Mafia members fit in. Because they're connected to some of the princes. And the princes could get some of the Mafia members to kill off some of the other princes. You know, those type of things. I don't know where we're going to go with the Hisoka in... Phantom Troop stuff. I want you to do the voice of the pink cleaner. Is that okay? I suppose I can help my little squire. You always call me that, but I'm older than you. Sorry, it was never... Sorry, it never seems that way. And I have another request. You want to ask Sheila and Sarasa, right? To dub the purple cleaner and the orange cleaner? The love triangles and exchanges between the female members are a big part of the draw, right? It's better to have three people acting them out for the chemistry. I love you, Paku. You don't have to flatter me, I'll convince them. It's not flattery, it's the truth. I mean it, okay? Damn. Knowing that she was like, ride or die till the end, too. We don't know these girls, though. What were their names again? I don't think we've ever... S unless they end up changing their names and being... Um... S Sheila and Sarasa? I'll do it, it sounds so fun. I'll do it if Sarasa's gonna do it. We're gonna show it next Sunday in the church hall and we can let Uvo and the guys find out before then. That idiot gets mad and loud when he doesn't get all the attention. Sheila, what book is that? The Swashbuckling Adventures of Dino Hunter? Haven't you heard that already? Haven't you read that already? This is the only book I read because I'm gonna be a hunter someday. Shouldn't you read lots of books then? Leave me alone, I'll make it work. Here are your scripts. Dang, he's over here writing full scripts already, just in just in the time I went to look for them. 
Sheila, you have to stop reading while you walk or else you're going to get hurt. You're going to keep getting hurt. You mean you're going to do all the other voices? I want to be orange? It started right away, and if we recruit more people, the bigger risk that we'll find out. Carlos should have been born someplace else. I mean, he's bringing these kids together. Trying to, and it seems like even though the kids are out there just running around like back backwood junkyard dogs and shit, they're still kids and still have some base camaraderie, I'm sure, at the end of the day. And these kids up in the van to be continued, huh? Interesting, interesting, interesting. So we got a lot of troop stuff there. Got, what, two new name drop characters here? Which I'm sure are no longer alive. Same thing with Paku. Um, this is Pakunoto, correct? I would assume. And then we had all the other kids up here. I wonder when Franklin's earlobes got so damn long. He looks like, um... If you guys ever play Tekken... What's the guy that has the thick, tall-ass chef's hat, blonde hair, punches fire, has the leather black jacket, I forget his name. Um, Sphinx and Nobu, I'm guessing that's Nobu just hanging out. Rolo, Uvo, Franklin. And who were the other ones? He was with two more. Who is this supposed to be? Not sure. That was the only one I did. did we, we didn't get a name on that, I don't think. Um, and Machi's ass. <laughs> I'm curious how Machi got roped up with Uvo in the first place. Like, because we, we see, like, the cliques that they're in. Were they always kind of, like, close in those cliques? Like, were the two of these always running around separate from others? Were the three of these always running around? That... I don't know, we'll kind of wait there and see. I don't think we got any flashes of what Nobu's ability might actually be. I think him doing this here was just him cutting a hole in that wall, slash trying to see if anything would happen to his sword, is how I interpreted that. Um, no hints at his abilities. And we saw the Jiayu in the... Uh... Char, I remember saying, hey, told him. They said they didn't care. They said they know it's a trap. What do you want us to do? <laughs> they said they'll be fine. Um, and they're dropping some good knowledge here. Like, this isn't them getting up and out and evacuating. A group of people that they thought was just reckless. And clearly there's some hierarchy here and some direction and some leadership. Um, and Nobu's like, shit, that was us at the beginning pan flashback to Meteor City. Um, I mean, clearly you're going to keep this going, right? Especially with the, the kidnapping here. Um, surely, right? I'm curious if we pick up on 396 with this flashback, or are we going to jump back to another plot point and then eventually come back to this? Because, I mean, we're bouncing around a lot. Um... Oh, I really thought for a second there we were going to get some Nobu <laughs> possible ability drop, but I don't think we gained anything. I'm sure there'll be a bunch of theory crafting videos on what it could or couldn't be, but go ahead and leave it there. Solid stuff. This will go up on Monday, um, and that'll be our new uploads for the uh, Thun Hunter. So it'll be Berserk and Hunter Hunter on Monday instead of Berserk and Hunter Hunter on Friday. Um, leave it there. Appreciate it, everybody. Like, share, subscribe, always.